Good morning. Uh, what a morning it is. We have a couple of announcements. First of all, um, the first one is um, one that you all know very well. Oh, it was the oh yeah, the church council meets on on Tuesday at 5:30 and via Zoom or come to the office and a couple of us will be there um, via Zoom with the rest of the members. Um, if she shows up, that is, uh, Marge may, you know, yeah, she, she always leaves me uh, in the lurk to see if I, anyway, the other announcement, um, do we have any other things that need to be said? Is Kim has a few words to share. This past week, uh, Kim, Kim and Kim and myself uh, attended the uh, Rocky Mountain uh, Synod Assembly in El Paso, and Kim has a few words to say. So take it away. All right. Oops. Is it okay if I just turn on? Is it on? Okay. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, yes, we, um, Kim and Pastor, and also the Swansons, um, attended the Synod Assembly, which was titled Cruzando Fronteras, and I have one of the official shirts on from it, and it took place in El Paso. Um, and the whole theme of the uh, conference was the issue of immigration and migrants and the challenges that they face. Um, and so most of it was organized um, not only by the Synod, but also Pastora Rosemary Guzman, which we're all familiar with um, at uh, Cristo Rey. Um, and it was just an amazing experience. So I don't want to take up too much time, but just, just, just give you a little bit of the highlights and how it relates to us. Um, we had a Bible study every each morning, um, and it was led by Pastor Levy, who's from the Pacific School of Religion. He's the president there. And he um, talked about relating the story of Exodus to migration and to migrants. And he really pointed out that this issue is not new. Um, this is something that has been happening for literally millennia. Um, and so that really helped to put um, it into context in terms of faith and in terms of where we are as a faith community. Um, and then we also heard from um, Ruben Garcia. He's the director of Annunciation House who has been doing a great deal of work with the migrants, especially the, if you've watched the news um, the last couple of weeks, there were literally thousands of migrants who arrived um, at the border. And so Ruben and his organization um, are doing quite a bit of work in helping the migrants to get situated, to um, get help, just humane help, legal help, all of that. Um, but he really helped us in terms of putting into context the current issue in terms of history and legal issues as well. Um, and that was also very helpful. So the second day was Border Immersion Day. And so there were, I don't know, 250, 260 people attending this assembly. Um, and so there were 25 vans, all went out into different areas to get a, a literal experience of immersion into the border and what is going on. And so the group that I was in, and Kim was also in my group, we went to a place called the Mustard Seed Cafe, which is a wonderful cafe. They serve lunch and anyone can go and eat. There's no, you know, you don't have to say, you don't have to pay. Um, and it's just a really wonderful ministry that they have there. So there we met um, a woman by the name of Carmen. And she um, traveled from Venezuela to El Paso. It took her more than three months to make this journey. And she traveled with her 14-year-old daughter. Um, and so what really struck me about Carmen's story was her faith. And it was inspiring is, is like an understatement um, because she talked about how she was never really afraid because she knew God was with her and that God would protect her and her daughter as they made this journey. 
And she tell, told the story in such detail. It was, you know, you were just right there with, with her. Um, but she talked about, you know, going through the Darien Gap, which is a treacherous, you know, jungle um, landscape. They had to go through that. They had to travel over mountains. They had to cross rivers. Um, they had to deal with people who were not helpful in their, you know, for their best interest. They had to pay off, um, you know, coyotes to help get them, you know, through certain um, parts of the journey. They had to pay off corrupt officials um, who demanded bribes in order to allow them to continue their journey. Um, but through all of that, you know, Carmen never, I mean, never lost faith. And she also talked about um, how the migrants, and, and she said when they started, there were probably a thousand people gathered together who, who decided let's all travel together. Um, they helped each other. And that was very touching. And she said there were people there not only from Venezuela and other parts of South America, but also from Haiti, from countries in Africa. I mean, there are people who are coming from all over the world, you know, where there's oppression, repression, where there's um, economic instability um, coming to find, you know, just to make a better life for themselves, to find security, to find um, stability. And so that was, you know, very um, inspiring as well. Um, so they traveled through, I believe, eight countries. Is that right, Kim? She said eight different countries. Um, they finally landed, um, arrived in El Paso. They had to, through Mexico, ride, I don't know if you're familiar with the train. It's called La Bestia or the Beast, um, where the migrants really, they have to sit on top of the train. It's very dangerous. Um, but she and her daughter did that. There, at one point, she almost lost her daughter in a crush of people trying to get on a bus. Um, but she said as they were riding the train, it was really interesting because um, through certain towns and villages, people would stand along the side of the tracks and throw food at them, you know, to give them assistance. And, and I, I looked up in the news and I guess, yeah, this is happening all over Mexico where there are organizations who actually um, gather food together with the intention of, you know, tossing it to the migrants as they pass through riding on that train. So I guess it just attests to, you know, humanity, you know, gives, you, gives, gives me a little bit of more faith in humanity. Um, so with all of that, you know, we were also challenged to think about what can we do as individuals? What can we do as churches? Um, Bishop Gonia talked a lot about that um, the last day, well, after we did our board immersions and then on the last day. And so I want to pass that along to all of us. And Pastor Jerry and, and Kim and I have been talking and um, Pastor Jerry has a wonderful idea about maybe doing something with um, God's work, our hands, um, later on in the, in the fall. But I'd like to um, ask everyone to think about what can we do as a church um, in response to this issue? You know, how might we be able to help migrants to um, get humane assistance? You know, do we want to gather supplies? Do we, you know, so maybe we can think about that. Um, and you can share ideas at some point, you know, over the next days, weeks, months, um, of what is our response going to be to this issue um, as a faith community, as a church and congregation. Thanks for listening. It was an overwhelming experience. And along with that, um, uh, the Rocky Mountain Synod is going to encourage folks to, to think about immigration. And the big concern with the issue of immigration is somehow trying to impact the countries where people are coming from um, so that people aren't so afraid and feeling the need to leave. And so there'll be a, um, a letter writing campaign which is uh, being developed um, as as we speak, so it'll it'll be coming soon to somehow try to change the whole system. But it was a good it was a good time, eye opening experience, and uh, and we were baptized two nights, going back from 
the convention center, two blocks to the hotel. Oh, it's raining. No, it's pouring. Yeah. And the second night after, after the border immersion and after our uh, little fiesta we, that we had, it was raining. Wow. Yeah. We all melted, of course. Anyway, so to, today we end our season of Easter. It's the seventh Sunday of Easter, and this is the waiting Sunday. As Jesus ascended on Thursday um, back into heaven, and the disciples are in that time of waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. So please join me, if you will, with the conf uh, Thanksgiving for baptism as it appears in your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for the oceans, thanks, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for the waters that wash us clean. Quench our thirst and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection, strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. For drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Hymn number 393.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, for the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O God. Amen. the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy the god of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore now is the feast of the lamb once slain whose blood has freed and united us one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation. Life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. The feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, your Son Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ suffered. suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. 
They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. <clears throat> then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. <clears throat> Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his uh, brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we'll read responsibly from Psalm 68. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God, you restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 4. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel from John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, 
He looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to, to those whom you gave me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave me, I have given to them, that they may receive them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on, those, on behalf of those you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I've been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This is the last Sunday of our Easter season. And in my, in my view, it has some other names associated with it, but in my view, it's the waiting Sunday. And I don't mean this kind of wait, but the other kind of wait, um, the kind we love to do so much. Uh, because like the disciples, Jesus has ascended into heaven, and like the disciples, we too await the coming of the Holy Spirit. Don't you just love to wait? I know it's one, you know, that's the reason I'm not a doctor. I have no patience, you know. Uh, a, I think it gets worse. But we do hate to wait, don't we? We hate to wait when the train comes to the tracks and it goes on forever. And this, when you think it's done, and oh, it goes on forever even more. And waiting for elevators, waiting for all kinds of things. Checkout, you know, even, even at the self-checkout, you have to wait in line these days. Um, waiting is not something we do. And part of the problem is, what do you do while you wait. I waited for the elevator to go up in, uh, in El Paso, but I knew what to do because as people got on and they pressed their floors, we had a bingo right across the line. It was all lit up. So I declared bingo. And everybody, oh yeah, well, you know. They just kind of smile and nod and knew that I would get off and they would get off and they, but what do you do while you wait? Well, our lessons this morning give us suggestions of what we can do while we wait, while we await Jesus' return at the end of time. In our first lesson, it is part of the story of the ascension. As the disciples gather with Jesus on that hillside and he ascends before them, and then they return. They return to Jerusalem, and what do they do? They devote themselves to prayer. Oh, oh, that's a novel idea. But it's one that probably seemed very natural at the time because they lived in all this uncertainty. They'd just gone through, even though they were told beforehand about his death and resurrection, they didn't understand it, and now his appearance after his resurrection and, and now he ascends into heaven and they're really wondering what's next. They devoted themselves to prayer as they awaited the coming of the promised Holy Spirit. Oh, so that's one thing. 
And then we get to our second lesson. And Peter has his own take. His subject is suffering. And the waiting there is waiting for the suffering to be over. And what is his suggestion to do while we're suffering? Rejoice! Oh yeah, you know, that went over like a lead balloon, didn't it? Except what he's trying to help people understand is they are suffering not because of something they've done, but they are suffering unjustly as Christ did. And so he says, rejoice, the suffering's gonna come. It's not a matter of, of, of if, it's a matter of when. And so rejoice in the fact that you are suffering like Christ, sharing in, in his sufferings. And as you rejoice in that suffering, remember that God really cares for you and cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares with love and compassion for you in the midst of all, all that you face. So devote oneself to prayer and rejoice. And then in our gospel lesson, oh, this is one that I always try to avoid. Um, well, it's all this language John uses about, you know, as he re reports Jesus' prayer with his disciples. He's just gone on for uh, quite a while describing uh, what's going to happen um, and trying to help his disciples understand that this is all about a relationship. It's not about uh, following the rules and doing the right thing in order to, to get God's favor, but it's about a relationship. And then after all that discussion, then comes the prayer. I remember prayers like this as a kid, sitting in church and wondering, when is the pastor ever going to quit? Because it was such a long prayer, yeah. And kind of confusing as a child. But Jesus prays. And what does he pray for? He prays and basically repeats everything he said to the disciples in his prayer. He prays for unity, emphasizing again that this is all about a relationship, a relationship with God the Father and with him, and a relationship with one another. He's trying to steer the disciples away from thinking like some of the th thoughts we sometimes get into, that this, this whole faith thing is a thing that salvation is a thing, that it's all about going to heaven. And we've made it into an object uh, or a certificate of acquittal of our sins. But Jesus is trying to remind them in this prayer that it is about a relationship, living in the love of God. Because oftentimes when we turn salvation and, and faith into a thing, we lose that mutual love and compassion for one another. And so Jesus emphasizes unity, unity with God, unity with him, and unity with one another. To be joined in the love and grace of God and to live in that love in all of our lives. And so our lessons remind us to devote ourselves to prayer, to rejoice and to be united with one another, even in the midst of our differences. Well, we know what it's like to wait. We've just gone through a three year journey, haven't we? With COVID, anyone remember that? Yeah. And it's not entirely over. There's still the remnants of it, but most of it has, has gone and and now it's become a distant memory for many. But that was a waiting time in the midst of it, waiting for it to get over, waiting for some break, waiting to take those masks off, waiting to be able to, to socialize again without concern of spreading a disease. We know what it's like to wait, and it wasn't fun. Did we devote ourselves to prayer? Did we rejoice? Did we join in the unity with one another? Well, this past week, 
some of us experienced another form of waiting with those who are seeking asylum in the United States and those who have been processed at the border and then are moving on to be with friends and family across the United States and helping them on their journey. The journey that has taken them a long time, as Kim described, months to get through the jungle and all kinds of treacherous paths that they, and bribes and corruption, et cetera. And then to finally find a place, a place here and begin the process, which is another long wait of months, uh, if you were fortunate, years to go through the whole process that must take place. And it's very expensive. But the determination and the energy with which people devote themselves, they know what waiting is about and they've been down that journey. And as Kim so aptly described with Carmen, the, the sense of faith that God is in the midst. And that's just one story among many of those who have been through this process and are still in the process and still their faith is very evident in all that they do. So what is our response? What do we do when we wait? Well, in the midst of our waiting, in the midst of our waiting for Christ to return, in the midst of our waiting to know what God is calling us to be about, he comes to us in his, in, at his table in simple bread and simple wine to refresh us, to invigor us, to assure us that we are forgiven and we are free. We are free to live in that same love the love that, that many of us witnessed among people who volunteer their time and their money to help strangers whom they'll never see again, but help strangers on their path, on their path of faith. So this morning, as our Easter season is coming to a close, the resurrection is still real. The mighty cloth is coming down. Jim did not want to follow the suggestions I had, except the one to put a wire and I pull it down and it'll fall on me. He was fine with that one. But all of the stuff comes down, but the resurrection is still real because we are people of the resurrection. We are people of God's love and compassion, seeking, seeking to share that love in all that we do. Thanks be to God, amen.
let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to, uh, to use it wisely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, or prisoners. Break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our staff and council. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for Helena and all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. Thank you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our calling and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. 
holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, gracious, and merciful God. Everything is filled with your glory. We give you thanks for your promise and presence, which have sustained the faithful in this and in every generation. Above all, we give you thanks for Jesus, born of Mary, who in word and deed announced your gentle rule of justice, reconciliation, and peace. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. Send now we pray your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us in your whole creation. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Amen. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, gives everyone a place at the welcome table. Come, for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look upon us with favor and give us peace.